the unique aspect of how we look at children and finally determine diagnosis is that there's consensus building to some extent um, and we really like for parents to hear one set of information versus what happens frequently where a child is seen maybe by neurology and then by neuropsychology, perhaps speech at some point. And often there's an inconsistent message that's being given. So we've, we've really worked hard to um, come together on our findings for parents and um, also to administer and utilize evidence-based processes for diagnosing children. You know, I think we've made it now our mission, which is that there's so many, um, not even professionals all the time, but um, children are being labeled by a number of different um, sources that are not always reliable and it creates a great deal of anxiety and misinformation to parents. So mm -hmm. we, we've really tried to use tools that look at cognitive areas, um, checklists and interviewing um, procedures that get at emotional, behavioral, social issues, and certainly autism specific tools in the face of exploring etiologies which may be medically based, which may be metabolic and genetically based. Um, so, so together it, it, it's quite comprehensive. There's a great advantage to doing the one-stop shopping uh, to be able to have the parents come in and uh, have an evaluation instead of taking four or five different visits and get it all at one time. And uh, then because of the consensus, uh, possibly being referred to those areas that can really help the uh, actual diagnosis that we come up with. One of the advantages that we have uh, in our new clinic here at the West Bloomfield Center is that, first of all, we have the opportunity to observe patients through a one-way mirror, um, which significantly reduces the amount of stress and anxiety on the child and for these children who um, are very sensorily um, sensitive. The other advantage is our new um, cameras and recorders that have been installed here. Be what this allows us to do is look at the most subtle behaviors associated with autism. And especially in the higher functioning children where the deficits are not obvious, our cameras allow us to zoom in on aspects of um, their eye expressions, their facial expressions, their gaze, where they're directing their eye movements. So for example, um, just use um, this object to begin with. We can work the cameras from outside the room and zoom into an object and you can see the detail that we get um, as we go further and further in. So especially things like eye contact, which is easy to miss when there may be subtle deficits. We want to have this type of technology that allows us to capture it, record it, and go back and look at it at a later point. Um, this is set into a shared network, which can also be transmitted to our main hospital. Um, many, our, the specialist on our team uh, actually travel to many of our satellites and um, operate out of our main hospital. So this technology allows them to pull up the same images at their own computer from a distance and provide consultation at some point.